So this is the second part in our review for the chapter 11 test. Here we're going to try to graph a couple of uh, polynomials. We need to get it into factored form first, and uh, there's no need to do the rational root theorem. That's a long winding road that we can do more efficiently. This, if you can recognize it, is what we call quadratic form. So I'm going to factor the negative out. I think it's easier to deal with it that way. So when we do, then, oops, I didn't write that down correctly. Hold on there. Let me fix it. I want the original problem to have a minus here. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. Okay, so now when I factor the negative out, that's going to make that into a plus 9. So now we can factor this like it's a quadratic. And so if you use your box and diamond or whatever your strategy is, we're going to get x squared here instead of just an x. So it'll multiply to be the x to the fourth. And we should get a minus 9 and a minus 1. Now these in turn are difference of two squares, so they can factor further. So that's going to be an x minus 3 and an x plus 3 coming from the x squared minus 9, and an x minus 1 and an x plus 1 coming from the x squared minus 1. So now we're ready to draw our graph, and since it's factored, we can tell what the zeros are going to be. We're going to get positive 3, negative 3, positive 1, negative 1. So here's the negative 3. There's the negative 1, the positive 1, and the positive 3. Now we need to know the left-end behavior. We could use the factored form, and we can also, because we have the original um, multiplied out, it might be easier to use the leading coefficient test. If we put in a large negative for x, to the fourth power will be positive, times a negative is going to be a negative, so that left-hand behavior would be negative. I'm just going to show you, you could also do it this way. If you put in a large negative, this is always going to be negative. Negative 1,000 minus 3 is negative. Negative 1,000 plus 3 is negative. Negative 1,000 minus 1 is negative. Negative 1,000 plus 1 is negative. We have 5 negatives. That's going to be a negative, so it's also telling us that the left-hand behavior is going to be negative. All of these zeros are to the first power, so it's going to be a cross, 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 and we get something that kind of looks like a big M. Let's do a different one, a little different strategy in factoring this. y equals x to the third plus 3x squared minus 4x and then a minus 12. So on this one, our strategy is not quadratic form, and it's a higher-order polynomial, we, but if, if we pair these up, so it's called factor by grouping. So out of the first pair, the greatest common factor is an x squared. That will leave us with an x plus 3. The second pair, if we pull out a negative 4, we'll also get an x plus 3. And so that's how we can tell if this is going to work or not. Since these are in agreement, we can go on. If they didn't agree, that would mean we either don't have the right strategy or we made a mistake somewhere. So we get to here, and then we can factor that x squared minus 4 some more into x minus 2, x plus 2. And so now we can again see what our zeros are, our x-intercepts are going to be at negative 3, positive 2, and negative 2. So at negative 3, at a negative 2, I think I left off the parentheses there, and at a positive 2. So again, we're going to use the left-end behavior, and I think we can see here if we plug in a large negative, it's going to be negative. So we're going to come from down below. And these are all to the first power, so it's going to again go cross, cross, and then across. Okay? Let's try a different kind of question here. 
let's use the rational root theorem to find the zeros in factor. Use the rational root theorem to find the zeros in factor. So let's start with uh, a fourth degree. So we have y equals x to the fourth minus 2x to the third plus x squared plus 2 uh, plus x squared plus 2x and then a minus 2. So if you remember to start the ball rolling here, we got to figure out what are our p's and q's. So p's are going to divide into the leading coefficient evenly, and there's not a lot of choices there. Either 1 or 2 could be either positive or negative, and the q's are going to divide into the leading coefficient evenly. That's just plus or minus 1, so that means our p over q's are going to be just plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. Okay, now begins our search. So let's see if we can find a zero. If we try one, we're going to put our coefficients across the top. One, negative two, one, two, negative two. Did I get them all right? X to the fourth, x to the third, x to the second, x to the first x. Okay, so everything's got a representation. We're going to go one, one, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, two, two and oh this is nice we lucked into it that's going to work right off the bat now we should be on the lookout it could be that one is a zero again so i don't want to overlook that possibility so i'm going to try one again and let's see we get one one zero uh zero zero one not going to work well, that had promise so let's come back and Let's try this time, we've used one, should we try negative one? And I'm gonna write those coefficients back, the one, negative one, zero, and two. And let's see what we get here. So we're gonna go one times negative one is negative one, and that's gonna be negative two, times negative one is two, plus zero is two, times negative one is negative two, there's another zero. And now what we have remaining is a quadratic. And that's going to be our x squared minus 2x plus 2. I don't think that's going to factor. So we're going to have to use our quadratic formula and go 2 plus or minus, that's negative b, plus or minus. The square root of b squared is going to be 4 minus 4 times 1, that's the a, times C, which is 2 all over 2A. So that is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of, and that's going to be a 4 minus 8, which is a negative 4. And so when we simplify negative 4, we're going to get 2i. So we're getting 2 plus or minus 2i over 2, which we can split up and simplify to get 1 plus or minus i. So to answer our questions, the first one is our zeros, and they are going to be, we said, I guess, 1 and negative 1, and then 1 plus i, and 1 minus i. Our factors, to factor that completely, we're going to say that our original uh, polynomial is going to be, since 1 was a 0, then x minus 1 is a factor. Since negative 1 is a 0, x plus 1 is a factor. And since 1 minus i, 1 plus i is a factor, we're going to get x minus that is going to be an x minus 1 minus i. And from the 1 minus i, we're going to get x minus 1 plus i. And so there's our factorization. Okay, let's try a different kind of problem here. So I'm going to say when a polynomial p of x is divided by 2x plus 5, 
is divided by 2x plus 5. The quotient, the quotient is x squared minus 3x plus 1. And the remainder is negative 5. And the remainder is negative 5. And our challenge is, can we find that, can we construct, reconstruct, that original polynomial P of X? So what we're thinking here is, uh, remember, one of the forms we write our division is P of X is going to be the divisor. So I'm going to call that D of X, the thing we're dividing by, times the quotient, and then plus the remainder. And so using that idea, we're going to get that our P of X is going to be, we're going to have 2X plus 5, and that's our divisor, what we're dividing by. The quotient is X squared minus 3X plus 1. That's what would have been on top of our division symbol. And then plus the remainder is a negative 5. So to reconstruct P of X, I'm going to distribute that. The 2X times X squared is 2X to the third. 2X times the negative 3X is a minus 6X squared. 2X times the 1 is a plus 2X. Coming back with the 5 and distributing that is going to be a 5X squared. 5 times a negative 3 is a negative 15X. And 5 times the 1 is a 5. And then we've got that other minus 5. So at the end of the day, our P of X is going to be, I'm going to add these together. Our P of X is 2X to the third minus X squared minus 13X. And there is no constant because that the 5 and negative 5 killed each other off. Okay, kind of an interesting question. So let's try a different one here. Let's say uh, I'm going to give you here a couple of different graphs and ask you to find, from the graph, find an equation of the polynomial. Of the polynomial. And I'm going to say with the following graph. I'm going to give you a couple of different ones here. So on the first one, I'm going to give you a graph that looks like, so at x equals negative 2, we're going to have an x-intercept. And up here at 0, 5 is going to be a point. And then at x equals positive 2, there's going to be another x-intercept. This graph is going to bounce off of the negative 2, go through the point 0, 5, and then it's going to swirl as it goes through that point 2, 0. So this is negative 2, 0, and this point over here is 2, 0. So armed with that information, now uh, because in this case we do know a point that's not on the x-axis, we're actually going to be able to solve and specifically find out what that coefficient, that leading coefficient, is going to be. If I didn't know a point that was off of the x-axis, then I, I can't be that specific. All right. Negative 2 is a 0. Since it bounces, that means that x plus 2 is going to be a factor. It has to be an even power. I'm just going to pick the smallest even power. Uh, we don't have any more information where we could say that it must be to the fourth or anything like that. Then the positive 2 is a 0, so that means x minus 2 is a factor. Since it swirls, I must have an odd power greater than 1. I'm going to choose 3. Uh, I don't have any information that might tell me that it might be 5 or 7. I don't really know, so I, I would have to be able to accept either of those, any of those answers. Now we're going to use the point zero 0,5 and find out what that A is. So now we can plug in 0 for x, and everywhere we see it. And now if we do the work for this, we're going to get 2 squared is 4, 
negative 2 cubed is negative 8, so we're going to get negative 32a is equal to 5, so that's going to make a, a negative 532, 530 seconds. And that's going to make our actual equation, or at the end of the day, the final equation, is going to be a negative 5 over 32 times the x plus 2 squared and the x minus 2 cubed. Now I'm going to do one very similar to that. I'm going to see if I can squeeze it into uh, this other side because I want you to be able to see them side by side. Um, this next graph, I'm not going to give you a point like we saw here that is not on the x-axis. So on this one, oh, I guess I am too. Um, so I'm, I am going to give you one, so we'll be able to do it very similarly. So I'm going to have an x-intercept at negative 2, another one at positive 2, and I'm going to tell you a y-intercept at 0, negative 3. And so here is going to be our curve. It's going to bounce, and then it's going to swirl as it goes through there. Okay, so in a similar fashion, we're going to say y is equal to a times, that's going to be an x plus 2 to the second, and an x minus 2 to the third. We're going to plug in the 0, negative 3. And so we're going to say negative 3 is a times 0 plus 2 squared, 0 minus 2 cubed. So negative 3 is going to be a times 4 times negative 8. That sure is an awful lot like the last one we did. And so we're going to get 3 30 seconds is the a. And so our equation is going to be a 3 30 seconds times x plus 2 squared and x minus 2 cubed. All right, one last question. I'm going to give you another true-false question. True-false, can you explain? And so the question is, can a fifth-degree polynomial, can a fifth-degree polynomial be tangent to the x-axis three times? Be tangent to the x-axis three times. So let's see if we can draw a picture to illustrate this. What we mean by tangent to the x-axis is that curve is going to bounce. So tangent to the x-axis really means the curve is going to bounce off of the x-axis. So could we have a fifth degree polynomial that bounced off the x-axis say three times. One, two, three. But we know when we get a bounce off of, uh, when our graph bounces, that means it must be coming from a factor that is to, uh, to an even power. So it might be the second to the fourth. So at a minimum, each of these places where the curve bounces represents uh, a factor of a zero of multiplicity two. So that means we would have to have at least two plus two plus two. It would have to be at least a sixth degree polynomial in order to be tangent to the x-axis three times. A fifth degree doesn't have enough room for that, so our answer is no. All right, very good. See what you can do with that review worksheet.